Hey, it's Guido. We are doing a, well, it's, I was going to say it's a coffee talk. It's not really a coffee talk because I am just announcing here, which is going to be at the beginning of my video, that I'm going to be playing Frontline. But I'm going to play Frontline with only Tech Tree Tanks. We're going to see how it goes. I've got the Hawk 12 right here. My favorite Tech Tree Tank of all time. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. Been playing it a little bit. Interesting, terrible little tank. But I'm going to be playing Tech Tree Tanks. So that means no objects. It means no scorpions. It means no, what else here? What else would I play? Ooh, Patriots, none of those. We're not going to do any of those. We're not going to do Progettos. There are going to be no Progettos played by me this episode. No T-54 prototypes. No no IS-3, click on that, IS-3As. No LT-4432s. No 132PMs. Holy cow. No TS-5s. How am I going to do this? This is going to be awful. But we're going to find out. We're going to find out what it's like to play only Tech Tree Tier 8s for, I think it's Episode 3 of Frontline. So let's get started, and I will update as we go. And then this will be one long, boring video at some point. <laughs> That's how you sell it. One long, boring video. But the good news is i got plenty of coffee. i got a week of Frontline, so let's see what happens. With only Tech Tree, it's not you, TS5, no awesome tanks like this, the 4502. The 100-01, what else? The T-44, actually pretty decent tank, so that won't bother me to drive. The ISM, how about that for the armored tank? Uh, the Cairn, okay, not bad, not bad. The Centurion, Centurion's a good tank, right? Two mark, look at that. All right, so it's looking up. Not terrible tanks, so let's see how it goes. Well, all right, it is Sunday. How did my frontline experience go after that little intro? I'm going to show you some gameplay after this, and we're going to talk about some of my thoughts on Frontline, but I'm going to give you my results, how it went first, before I start talking about some of my thoughts about Frontline. Remember, as I said earlier, I did this with all Tech Tree tanks, and I got to Prestige 3, what is it, rank? Tier. Tier 15. So not quite through a full Prestige line. I may play a couple more later on Sunday here, but it's Easter, so probably not. So how did I do? Well, let's see. I got three generals. I got 11 majors. And this is where it gets inter interesting. 10 captains. Eight lieutenant ranks. Eight. And two sergeant ranks, which is far, far worse than I did in the first two episodes. And during those episodes, I used whatever tank I wanted, mostly premium tanks. I'm not saying correlation is causation here. The fact that I only played Tech Tree Tanks made it worse because I think there's some other things going on in Frontline at the same time. However, it did not help much. <laughs> did not help much. We'll talk about it, why Tech Tree Tanks are so much harder to use. I just wanted to show you how far I got. That's where I am. I'm still on track to get all 10 done by the 10th episode. Not too worried about that, but this was fairly painful. So if I add all of those up, we've got 14, 24, 26, 34 games. 34 games. Three generals, so 10%, less than, little less than 10%. 11 majors, 10 captains, 8 lieutenants, that's bad, and 2 sergeant ranks. Holy cow. Amazing. So let's talk about why some of that happened, because I think it's interesting. And I'll show you some gameplay on a really silly game. Well, all right, here is the game. We are actually attacking. You can see I'm over on zone C on the right side, on the east side of the map. And this is in no particular order. So let's just start off. I, I'm attacking right off the bat. If you're defending, you're at a disadvantage automatically. Very difficult to win in defense on front line. So it is imbalanced as far as that goes. I am going to talk about the fact that you want to actually play as long as possible to rank up as much as possible. And we'll talk about some of the why twos and wherefores on that and why people don't do it. But defense is harder, right? Attacking is easier. When you're on the defense, it's a bummer. Why? Because you have to react to the attackers and you don't have more people than the attackers do. The attackers can flood zones, they can overwhelm a zone, and then they move to another zone. God forbid you put your tank in a zone that's quiet and there's no attackers around. Because if they're going to other zones, you may be out of the fight for a long time, and that's going to be hard for you to rank up. Whereas if you're an attacker, 
you can always jump in to the place where you've got the most attackers. Now, if you die and you can kill yourself off as well as a defender, then you can go, <coughs> excuse me, to where the attackers are. Unfortunately, if you show up as the only one or couple tanks in a zone being flooded, you're going to disappear quickly. And I ran into that multiple times. Trying to find the balance of where to, to spawn in and when to spawn in is actually a skill. And it is quite tricky and can be tricky. Because, like I said, if you find yourself in a spot where they're, you're just completely overwhelmed. Yes, there's hit points there to farm and to play, but you're going to get rolled over. They're just going to roll you over. So defense is in balance, and that's too bad. I, I said this was in no particular order. Wheeled tanks. Wheeled tanks have changed front lines quite a bit. I believe the first episode there weren't any wheeled tanks. As I recall, at least the, the first front lines a long time ago, there were no wheeled tanks. There are now, and they have changed the complexion of the game considerably. Between the wheel tanks and all of the light tanks, and to some extent all the mediums being played, that's actually quite unusual, by the way. There's a T-69. You don't see many of those played in front line. So good on him. You're going to see I bounce off his turret. He's got a magic turret. The fact of the wheel tanks, they've really changed the complexion of front lines. Why? Because they're so fast. They're so hard to hit. They can move from zone to zone. They can get in, in behind you and cause you problems that way, come in from the sides. And so, on the one hand, while that's good, it's a wide open map, it's a wide open game mode where you can go all kinds of places, it tends to make it very imbalanced for the attackers because the attackers can use the flexibility of the fast tanks much, much better than the defenders. It just works that way. Already in airstrikes. Complete nightmare in the game. There's the GW Tiger P hitting me there. About, what, 90 seconds to two minutes into the game, you can expect everybody to start generating their personal combat reserves and they'll be dropping artillery strikes and arty strikes and all of that. I like the smoke. I like the, the inspiration. I like, what are some of the other ones? The, the, the uh, spotting airplane, all that stuff is cool stuff. It's not direct damage dropped out of the blue on the people. Unfortunately, the airstrike and the artillery is. And allowing the artillery unit to have airstrike and artillery as a reserve, combat reserve, is a joke. I, it, it, I don't, I'm not going to show you because I actually did play a couple of my artillery on this, but just having those all up together and working together can just absolutely obliterate somebody. Artillery and airstrikes, is, it's a very painful, very painful. Mediums and lights, I sort of covered already. It's all mediums and lights, and that's going to segue into premium tanks. Premium tanks are where it's at in frontline. Nearly all of the recently released premium tanks are, are tier 8.5s. And you really are doing yourself a disservice by playing a tech tree tank. In front line. Now, what does it get, give you as a tech tree tank in front line? You're going to get a lot of grind, you're going to get a lot of credits, that's a good thing. So you can grind up crews, you can grind up the tank itself. But then you have to ask yourself, well, why am I doing that if all my premiums are just better tanks? Why am I grinding up? Well, to get to tier 9 and 10, there are no premium tanks right now, anyway, at tier 9 and 10, minus some of the special reward tank kind of things for Clan Wars. Premium tanks is where it's at. And that's unfortunate. It really is. And I played my, my Tech Tree tanks. And when I went into this thing, I thought, you know, I'm a pretty good player. So we like to do these challenges where we challenge ourselves to do certain things. And I thought it would be fun. thought it would be interesting. And really, about halfway through, it became extremely painful. Extremely painful. And I'd be scrolling through. Down, you can see down there, I'm looking through my tanks. And I'd be thinking, man, I wish I could take a, the 432 out. Or I wish I could get my Progetto or whatever overpowered tank, my defender to, to push a cap or do something. <laughs> but the thing is, you can see here I picked the Panther too, right? You might say, well, there's better tech tree tanks. That's your problem. We have noted. Got it. Completely understand, but I actually happen to like this thing. Anyway, back on track talking about it. There are, there are very few tech tree tanks that are the equivalent of premium tanks. And when you look at the rosters, of players, you'll notice that most everything is a premium tank, right? T26P, the Lurva, the Mod 1, another Lurva, uh, the Pantera is not, the 4190. You've got the 44FL, the, the Defender, the Progetto, the Low, the EBR, FL10, 
There you go. I said most. Yeah, I think most actually applies. I would not say the majority, necessarily a large majority, uh, but it kind of depends. How you are going to see tons of premium tanks, and they are simply better. They really are. For every premium tank that has a tech tree equivalent, the tech tree equivalent is, is worse. That's just the way it is. So you look at the Pantera, pretty good tank. The Progetto is better. You look at tanks that can push the cap, there really isn't anything the equivalent to the Defender out there that can push or push in to defend a cap. The 100.01 has a weak spot, its entire side, which the Defender doesn't have. It's also slower than the Defender. I can go on for the list. You understand what I'm saying? The Lynx is well worse than the FL-10 at Tier 8. I did get to play the Lynx. At least I was able to play a wheeled tank in there. Let's see if I get this shot. Oh, that's a bummer. So for every... There is no equivalent to the Scorpion and the Su-130 PM or whatever it is, right? There, there just isn't. Maybe the RHM, but the mobility on that isn't even close to those things. So it, it, it is an interesting situation where we are monetizing the tier eights such that, and I have no idea how he saw me. He must have just guessed I was coming up right there. Maybe he's just blind firing into that bush. We've monetized the tier eights such that in this entire mode, it's all about having a premium tank in order to rank up to get your reward tanks. It, it really is. Now, I proved it can be done with, with my tech tree tanks, but it was painful. It wasn't easy, that's for sure. Which then brings me to the large meta discussion about front lines here as I'm looking at, at it and we're on episode three and I'm considering that I'm going to do this seven more times because really the only reason I am here to be quite honest is I'm looking for the tanks right I want to get that tier what is it an eight I think the Emil thing and the tier nine I, I want the tanks that's that's why I'm here otherwise to be quite honest I wouldn't be playing the mode when it first came out I didn't play it I played twice and I quit playing it because there was to me there was a little point in playing the mode they're not keeping ranks. They're not keeping stats. It it doesn't really it doesn't really do anything. It, I guess you could say yes. It does give you uh, it does allow you to grind. It does give you experience and all that kind of good stuff. But I have to ask myself, what's the point? Well, what most people will tell you is the point is the point is to rank up and get the tanks and grind and get credits. At which at which I go, all right, so. What we're saying is, Wargaming has made this new mode of their cool tank game, full of tanks that we all like to play. But the purpose isn't to win this match. The purpose isn't to get in there and kill the bad guys. The purpose is to shoot as much and farm as much and rank up. And I know I just said that, and I think that's what everybody understands as far as the meta goes. But if you sit down and play a video game, the purpose of the video game, usually, nearly every time, is to win in some manner or to meet some condition that meant you did better than somebody else. And the condition here isn't necessarily that that I, gr I got more grinding done. The condition is I want to get to the end of the map, I want to capture the zones, and I want to destroy the turrets. Now, I'm going to pause it here because we're going to continue to talk this for just a minute, and I hope you've been watching what's going on down there on the mini-map. So the purpose is to grind. That's what a lot of guys want to talk about and say. But if you sit down, the purpose is to win. And if you min-max, which is what humans like to do, for people like me and you who pay attention to these things, then the min-max is I would like to capture all the zones, keep the game going as long as possible, and then right at the last moment destroy the third turret so that everyone gets as much rank as we can, but we win. And if I'm the defender, I want the same thing. I want to give up ground as required to get the maximum amount of time into the game because remember you get extra time as you are going up through the, the caps right there. And then right at the very end I want to stop them from beat, from destroying that third turret. Th that's, that's why it, it's kind of pointless as far as the game goes. That, that is, that's a couple levels of magnitude past what the average typical gamer wants to deal with. Right, and it ends up being a 30, 28, I guess, minute. What's the max? Somewhere around 28 minutes, I think, something in, like that. Game where you sit down, and you're playing for quite a long time. Whereas in the regular pubs, you can go anywhere from you know two to 15 at the most, usually around five or six minutes. So it's very different right there as far as the time investment that goes into it. And not many people are going to think about it in the way that I'm talking about. Clearly, in the case of this game, 
the two platoons that blasted through BE and are now wreaking havoc in the background with their fast tanks. You can't see what they are, but they happen to be EBRs and scouts and things like that. Lynxes. I looked at it on the on afterwards on the results of the of the game right there. They just blasted through, spread out, fanned out, and just started taking down turrets back there. You can see all three turrets are now destroyed, and the game is over. Right? We've captured B, E, and C. I wasn't really paying too much attention to what was going on. I was just trying to farm. Right? I'm figuring, hey, everyone kind of gets this. We're going to go through this. We're going to roll it. Take a lot of time. I'm going to get get up in rank, and I am barely a sergeant. Barely a sergeant. And these two platoons decided, hey, we want to just go through and win. Now, are they are they trolls? Did they decide to do this to try to irritate people? I don't know. Did they just do it to win? Probably. Just trying to get through there to win. So that that's why it's, I'm talking about here that it, I'm having a hard time. I'm struggling with what the point of Frontline is. Now you may say, Guido, come on, man. The point is to shoot some tanks. So what if you got the sergeant, hit battle again, do it again? I, and I get that. But... For us, for people like us who are trying to get better, trying to learn this game, trying to play a game we like quite a bit, we're not the standard. We're not the standard player, are we? You know what I'm saying? So, so I look at it and go, all right, I, I don't get it, man. What, what are we doing here? And if you go into the forums, you'll see, hey, this is a farming mode, man. You got you to gotta work all this to get as much time as possible. And while that's true, mechanically, how you would do that I doubt very seriously that when they decided to make this new mode that they sat down and went, hey, let's make a farming mode. That if you do certain things the right way, you'll get 28 minutes of pure farming. And then we'll add on top of it a mission that requires farming so that you can farm those two cool tanks at the end. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they said, let's make a really big battle that has win conditions and here's how we're going to set it up. And then they, they let it go and then they put the missions in there. But of course, people try to min-max. You know what I'm saying? People try to min-max. So, so that's been kind of my my struggle with Frontline right here. I am still playing it. I will play the rest of the episodes. Maybe not all of them. I may do a sprint at the end and then get to the, the 10 prestige levels that I need to get the tanks and then not do the last couple. We'll see how it goes. But I thought it was, I thought it was an interesting discussion, and it really was... It really was kind of brought to the fore when I was playing the Tech Tree Tanks. You know, God forbid that you've got a free-to-play player that doesn't have many premiums and is trying to play Frontline and is just getting walked on by Tier 8.5s. And really, some of them might as well be Tier 9s when they're only facing Tier 8s, to be quite honest. We call them 8.5s, but that's in a tier spread system. It, right here, where it's just pure tier 8s, a lot of those tanks are really tier 9s as compared to the rest of the tier 8s that are running around. Not compared to the other overpowered premiums, but to the tech tree tanks in particular. I mean, consider the Hawk 12. And I've seen a couple people play them. I, I just feel bad for them. I actually played it once or twice just for giggles in this, and they're just awful. They're I mean, compared to a, really to a WT-432, can, can you imagine? They're supposed to be the same tier. They're supposed to be the same tier. They're both light tanks, and they're not even close. I mean, it's, it's not even close. <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, here's what happens here. We're going to continue on. We're just... And I, again, I hadn't really paid attention, and then all of a sudden this happens. I stopped, and people are getting mad. And I even typed something in there, right? So we're just driving. I'm thinking, well, I don't even know why I'm driving because look at this. Victory. Hey, we won. Yay. Good job, platoons. Thanks for thanks for bringing us to victory, man. I, I got the sergeant. I'm going to get a lot. I'm get 150 prestige points. <laughs> and of course, the whole team is like, look, I just invested a considerable amount of time. And because I didn't have enough time to rank up, this was actually a waste of my time. And oh, by the way, while we won, those stats aren't kept. So nobody knows we won. There's no record that we won. I don't have now a 75% win rate in front, front line or a 25% or whatever it would be. Nobody knows because that's so cool that you don't keep stats. But we have a victory condition. <laughs> you see where I'm, I'm not understanding. It's a bit of a disconnect right here. It really is. And, and maybe at the end of the day, it's Guido. You just got to 
play for the love of the game, but it's a grinding game where where you level up, you get more stuff, you unlock things. That's the basic mechanic of the game. And when you mess with that, like they do here, it gets a little silly. It really does. All right, that is all I've got for Guido's sad story about grinding, or not grinding, but playing only tech tree tanks in Frontline. I don't have any great ideas for fixing it. This is something I'm thinking about right now. I don't, I don't really know what it is. It may be as simple as just different maps, just to mix it up a little bit. So maybe, because really people are really trying to starting to figure out on this particular map how to min max things, where to go, when not to go there, and that's good. That's what that's what we do to learn about maps and get better. But if there were three or four maps in the rotation, I think some of this would be not be as visible. It's still going to be there but it would not be quite as visible. What you do with the premium to tech tree problem is probably along the lines of the global rebalance. We'll see how that goes. But when when you've got so many tier eights attempting to fight nines and tens and pubs, and then you port them over here to frontline where it's all one tier, you've got problems, right? You're always gonna have some, some bad tanks and some good tanks. But right now I think the disparity between them is bad and it looks really bad that it's all premiums that are great and only very few tech tree tanks that are even really useful in front lines. I would say most people are only driving their tech tree tanks in front lines because either it's it's one of the few tech trees they really like or are good at, or they're grinding them. Otherwise, given a choice, I think most people are playing their premiums because what else do you get? The experience and the credits, and that's a whole other story. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, th this was a kind of a different miserable Monday. I felt like my grind the last week was sort of miserable, so I think it fits. That's all I've got. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, let me know what you think down the bottom. Tell me, tell me, uh, tell me where I'm wrong. Later.